It was cold for this time of year. Clear skied and freezing. The long drive made easier by the old country radio and that drop of whiskey in my overnight flask. The road was lonely. It was rare to see other drivers maybe passing one every three, four miles. But that's why we take the job, you know? The isolation is part of the appeal. I'd had a bit of trouble with one of the tyres a few hours before. The rain had been coming down thick and I completely missed the pothole. It had been losing air since and was overdue for a change. I always hated changing a flat at night, especially on this road. There was something about the way the trees lined up so perfectly on either side. Something about the blackness between the trunks that was just so oppressive. And this night was no different. I pulled the truck over, grabbed my gloves, my flask and a torch and set about changing the tyre. The cold was biting. Stung me even through my layers. The headlights cast an eerie spotlight over the road and tree line ahead. And the darkness almost seemed to push back. The way the light weaved in between the trees always terrified me. But I knew there was any elk out here. No chance of bears this close to the road. I remember a couple of years back on a similar night to this. An elk darted out in front of my cab. The impact killed it. Instantly. But one of its antlers got caught in the radiator grate. I had to stop and pull it out. And drag it to the side of the road. It cost me half a week's pay to get the blood washed out of the grill, and the whole thing shut me up something fierce. But there were no elk tonight, just the silence, and before long a newly fitted tyre. On the way back up to the cab I spotted a pair of headlights coming down the road about a mile away. It was a bit overdue. I took a quick swig from my flask and climbed back up into the cab. A twang of whiskey stinging my throat. By the time I'd set down the flask, taken off my gloves and put the keys in the ignition, I looked up the road from the force of habit. But the headlights I'd seen weren't there anymore. Strange, as this road was straight for another couple hundred miles. Maybe there had been a road constructed out into the forest since my last trip down here. There had been a pretty big push for lumber recently. Not that it mattered. Well, weirder things have happened on roads like these. Still, I found some comfort in the dull drone of the country music lazily pushing itself out from my speakers. Fifteen minutes or so later, and I was sure I'd passed the point where I'd seen the car in the distance. I'd been keeping a pretty constant eye on the trees and was certain that I'd seen those side roads or dirt paths that a car could have driven down. I don't know, maybe I just imagined it. The light plays weird tricks out here, especially at this time of night. A little too much of the old homebrew, maybe. It was pushing maybe 3, 4am at this point, and I could feel the weight on my eyes a little bit more than I was comfortable with. But there was something about the whole disappearing car thing that made me want to keep on down the road for a spell. So that's what I did. For another 10 or so miles. Somewhere down the road, the station I was listening to decided it would be a good time to switch hosts. And I decided it would be a good time to switch stations. I took another gulp of homebrew and started fiddling with the dial. I swear, I only took my eyes off the road for a second. When I looked back up, I had to swerve hard to the left to avoid a suited man in the middle of the road. I barely managed to keep control and nearly collided with the tree line. I braked so hard that the glove compartment busted open and sprayed a load of change and fast food boxes all over the floor. But fuck that. I reached in there and pocketed the gun inside, took another swig of homebrew for courage and popped the door of my cab. Ready for a heated conversation with this arsehole. But there was no one there. Just the moon over the trees, the blinking red and yellow brake lights on the pungent smell of hot rubber on the tarmac. I did a full 360 of the truck, gun in hand, shaken in anger and fear. But the man was gone. The strange, suited man, tall and gaunt. Disappeared without a trace. Maybe I imagined him. I was getting real tired and I was far too spooked to be standing in the middle of the road like an idiot. I jumped back into the cab, 
gun on the seat beside me and brought the truck back onto the road, speeding off as fast as I could. Maybe I was just mistaken. Maybe I was hallucinating. Too much homebrew. Too tired. I should have taken a pit stop by now. And the car, the disappearing car. I must just be having an off day, too much stress. Maybe the job is getting to me. Maybe I need a break. I need to sleep. I'm hallucinating. I'm going crazy. I took another deep gulp of homebrew and carried on down the long road for miles and miles until the pitch black of night started to soften into the warm purple of morning. Still completely shaken, I pulled the truck over, down the last few drops of homebrew and collapsed into my chair in complete exhaustion. When I woke up a few hours later, the sun had fully crested the road ahead of me. Sunlight pierced through the cab as I squinted and lowered the sun visor. I had a splitting headache. Maybe I'd neck more whiskey than I thought. Maybe I had imagined the whole thing. I sat there for a while, nervously playing with my gloves and staring out ahead of me. A couple of cars passed by as the truck sat still just off the road. Eventually, after a few swigs of water this time, I picked up the courage enough to get back on the road. But something was wrong. The pressure on the suspension didn't feel quite right. As if all the weight had been... The cargo container was just... gone. The whole thing, all 30 tons of it. How can it just have disappeared? What would anyone want with a cargo full of raw meat?